I want to start with you, uh, Nanatu Dadze. Uh, would you say that today's deferment of ruling came to you as a surprise, first of all? Well, thank you uh, very much, and uh, thank you to your esteemed um, uh, viewers. Um, uh, I, I'm a bit surprised that the, this case even is being adjourned, but well, that's the, we go to court, so we understand it. Uh, but, um, from time to time, the discretion of the, uh, the courts yeah, uh, come to play. So, well, let's see. It's, uh, it means that the big day will be tomorrow. Now, for us sitting here tonight, uh, the dynamics will have changed, you know, because the um, Supreme Court is going to deliver of itself, you know, a judgment. And here you are sitting talking about it, you know. Uh, we are lawyers, senior lawyers are that, and um, so you can understand if we may not approach this matter, you know, centered on the court proceedings. Do I get the feeling that you were disappointed things turned out the way they did today? No, because time is of the essence in this matter. You understand? Every single day, that Ghana loses on this judiciary and uh, parliament, you know, bruhaha, you know, we, we are losing our opportunity for peace. We are losing the opportunity for peaceful transfer of power. And that is the danger we face. The Supreme Court is wasting your time? Oh, no, no, they are doing a fantastic job. But I'm saying that we must all bring some sense of urgency to this matter. Let me get the preliminary thought of Freddie Blay. Uh, I mean, your representative in Parliament started this whole case by going to court even before the Speaker of Parliament could declare four seats vacant. And this is where we are. Nanatu that is just said that time is of the essence. Today, 26 days, I believe, to the general election. There should be other important things to handle ahead of this polls. Uh, I agree with him that there is a sense of urgency and everybody wanted to see it. The finality of this matter, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe concentrate and focus on other things. Only yeah. 26 days from now, there will be election, and uh, I don't want to say much about what is happening in court because uh, it means eminent sense to adjourn because uh, it it appears from what we saw on TV, the lawyers for. Right Honorable Abed Mahmoud were not in court. And uh, that was a bit surprising, but be it as it may, he did say that we don't want to go into the center of the matter as lawyers. But whatever it is, uh, it's only t tomorrow. And the court will give its ruling. And that should be bring a finality, bring an end to this storm in a teacup. It shouldn't have been a case. Maybe if cool heads had uh, remained or brought to bear on the matter, maybe we wouldn't have made it court of order. Cool heads had prevailed. Yeah, so I, think, I, think, I, I think that without, before you even come in, I think that should be what must be the underlying factor in this. He said two things, that cool heads must prevail, and then he significantly mentioned that there's really a storm in his teacup. I wholly endorse that. You wholly endorse that. Absolutely. Cool heads must prevail. But at the end of the day, aren't we where we are? Would you admit subtly that perhaps if this cool heads that we're talking about had been discussed in the chambers without going to court in the first place, we wouldn't be here? That's, that's why I'm saying that. Cool heads should have prevailed. We don't want to go into the antecedents from what we hear before the matter. Maybe I'm told, at least for the benefit of your audience that the majority leader had gone to see the speaker in chambers and discuss it with him. Unfortunately, that did not end it, and therefore it had to come to court. But so you, be it. It is what it is. You heard him during that press conference. He said that, you know, if this thing could have been handled in parliament, and I'm sure you, you watched that press conference by the speaker where he said that, 
what happens in Parliament is like a closed book. And he went on to quote Article 115, 116, and even a case to four versus AG and all of that. And yet we still decided to go to court. He didn't seem to give the impression that there was a conversation the, ahead. The, uh, my very good friend, we, we come from the same school, had already indicated. We don't want to go to the center of it. This matter couldn't be settled on the floor of Parliament because it's a question of it. One raises the idea of interpretation. Maybe you, do, you disagree and you want the interpretation to be done by the speaker. Others say that should be done by the, by the Supreme Court. And that's why one person or the majority leader went to court and wanted matter to be ended up. I, I believe the idea is that by tomorrow, we shall see the end of it, definitely. By tomorrow, we should have seen the end of the... And I'll come back to you, but we do have also with us, like I told you, Kofi Bento, who is vice president of Imani Africa, and he's a lawyer as well. Uh, good evening to you, sir. If you can hear us, thank you for joining us. Let me first get your preliminary thought, really, on what transpired today, bearing in mind uh, the things that happened with the accusations from the Speaker of Parliament and the counter-accusation from the NPP uh, caucus leader, Alexander Penyomarkin, that rather... It's him, Aban Bagbin, who is setting gun on fire. Good evening to everyone, especially my seniors in the studio. Um, those of us who go to court do not find it too surprising what happened. Um, I rather agree with the Supreme Court justice who are saying that it is not for the lawyers to be complaining about who is in court and who is not in court. That is for the judges to do. And if you have a case in court and you elect not to go to court, you have decided that, you know, the case should proceed without you. So maybe for everybody else, that's a lot of drama. But for those of us lawyers, what happened in court today is quite normal. Um, the court taking an adjournment to come back and rule is also very normal. What people don't realize is that after hearing everything, they have to go and read, they have to go and digest, they have to consult cases, they maybe have to discuss certain things, and then they have to write and whatever they write will be studied for ages to come. So there's a lot of work between concluding arguments and then delivering judgment. So it's all very normal what went on. Um, I wouldn't have been surprised if they gave a number of days um, to render the judgment because of the interest in it. Like I said, whatever they write today will be studied for ages to come. I am of the firm view that this is a very good opportunity for us to um, define for ourselves as a country what it means to cross carpet. You cannot say, in my view, that somebody deciding that I'm going to come back in another color, me, which takes effect in the next parliament, means they have you know, cross carpet in this parliament. Theoretically, it is possible to work with one group now and then come back with another group the next time. So. Um, I wouldn't have been surprised if they took extra time to look at the matter and try and do a surgical job to define very carefully what it means to cross carpet or to vacate your seat because I am of the view that it is not the same as electing to come back into parliament or electing to stand for election as, you know, or with a different political party. So, in short, it's all very normal. And I hope that tomorrow we'll get a decision that we can all live with. Uh, you hope that we get the decision we can all live with. But let me ask you this uh, before we go for a break, and then we'll delve into the implications uh, further. Aren't you concerned about the concern the Speaker raised, for instance, that we need to be able to protect the sovereignty of Parliament? And then we are talking about separation of powers here. Already he said that it was wrong in the first place for a member of Parliament to run to court when this is something that could have been discussed before for even considering the judiciary. Parliament has no sovereignty. And when people bandy these words about, we need to be careful. The UK Parliament is sovereign. Wars were fought over that issue alone. So let's be clear. We had a time in this country where Parliament was sovereign. It led to detentions and people died. From that time, we learned our lesson and decided that we would not have a sovereign parliament. The constitution is sovereign. The people are sovereign, and it's the Supreme Court that interprets the Constitution. So all of us are under the Constitution. Parliament is not sovereign. It is not right.
to interfere in the processes of parliament. When this whole matter started, people were saying, oh, it's an interference in the process of parliament. There's no interpretation issue there. And I insisted that there was an interpretation issue because the speaker had interpreted Article 97 and given effect to it. Now, if somebody disagrees, the place to go is the Supreme Court. So the short answer is there is no sovereignty for Ghana's parliament. Ghana's parliament is one of three arms of government which check each other. They make laws. The Supreme Court implements those laws and interprets those laws. If those laws that are made in parliament are not constitutional, the Supreme Court will strike it down. That's their job. Supreme Court is not sovereign. They are not se senior to parliament. But their job is to interpret the law and the constitution. So please, Move off this whole point about the sovereignty of parliament. That doesn't exist in Ghana's constitution.